<laughs> Next up, we have Ray Malone. And if you've walked in and haven't signed up and would like to, come see me on the sign up sheet. Go, Ray. Yeah, right. How's everybody today? Yay! Got a short story and a uh, a short poem in honor of the poetry one. Yeah. I just don't have a curse out there. <laughs> by the VSA, thank you very much. And they gave us a homework assignment, and the homework assignment was to write a story that started out with this particular sentence, which is the worst sentence in the whole story. But anyway, it had to start it with this sentence. I wanted you to be the first to know Rowan tentatively confided in me, which is very difficult to even say. So I had to write a story that began with that sentence. So here we go. It was a dark and sultry night. <laughs> I wanted you to be the first to know, Rowan tentatively confided in me. He was walking toward the edge of a cliff as he spoke. Then he said to me, I told her you were in love with her. Ignoring the fact that the rope I was hanging from was unraveling at a fast rate, I said, no, how could you do that? Rowan continued talking as he returned to the truck. I had to, he responded. She was staring at me. He grabbed the emergency rope that was lying under the camping gear. At the same time he did that, the, uh, the rope keeping me from falling roughly 200 feet unraveled enough to bring me one half inch closer to the bottom of the gorge. I strained my neck in an attempt to regain that slight margin so that I could once again see Rowan and said, what does that mean? I screamed at him from under the, the edge of the cliff. She was talking to you, not staring at you. Rowan fashioned one end of the rope into a loop and addressed my concerns. Good point, he said. Maybe I was the one that was staring. He made the other end of the rope into a lasso, and as he continued speaking, he started twirling the lasso around over his head. Well, either way, I told her. He let fly with one end of the rope and lassoed a nearby tree stump. With my questions becoming a bit eager, and with the palms of my hands getting very sweaty and growing tired, I asked Rowan, well, what exactly did you say to her? He let loose with the free end of the rope, the end with the loop in it, and the rope came sailing toward me. It looked like a long snake swimming in invisible water, and nothing at all like the rattlesnake that was currently resting on the ledge just below my dangling feet. Just that, he answered. I just said, you know he loves you, don't you? Watching the looped rope get closer to me, I noticed that we may have measured this part of the plan a little too close. So just at the right moment, I had to let go of the sweaty palm rope. I aimed my right foot at the point on the eight inch wide ledge right next to the snake and jumped out to grab the loop. But I didn't want you to tell her, I shouted. <laughs> Sorry. I shouted as I used the rope for leverage while I ran along the side of the mountain in great 20-foot strides all the way back to the dangling bottom of the bridge that almost brought me completely across the 50-foot gap between ledges. From there, I climbed the dam dangling bridge turned rope ladder. Is it too much to ask, short quick breath, that a man gets to tell, several quick breath, the woman that he loves, one long breath, that he loves her? Rowan reached down and grabbed me by the hand I extended to him with my question and admitted, no, of course not. <laughs> with one great pull, I came quickly up the last few feet and landed proudly on the ground in front of Rowan. So I asked him, how did she take the news? Oh, yeah. That was my homework assignment. <laughs> and now, in honor of Poetry Month, I have an original for you all. 
Uh, roses are red. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, I call this one cricket love. A timid deer stands in the forest, too unsure to make a sound. But the ease I feel when you are near us allows my deer to move around. The mighty wolf obeys his hunger. His sense is keen, his instincts smart. A trace of your scent will make him wonder if he can lead me to your heart. <coughs> the eagle soars high above the trees, sees everything beneath the sky. His call is piercing as your beauty. I feel the call when you walk by. Can you hear the distant thunder? The echoes of my beating heart? It's the essence of the spell I'm under as all my creatures do their part. Should you struggle through some hollows? Oh, I'm very sorry. I'm out of ink, I'm out of printer ink, I would have printed this stuff up. I have to take just one second here and open up the right thing. Ah, oh, so sorry. Should you struggle through my hollows? I'll help you find the path you need. Should that path prove hard to follow, just climb on board my faithful steed. We will ride to a thousand places, go anywhere we want to go. We'll feel the rain upon our faces and build warm shelter from the snow. Then as a tree becomes a forest, that's how love becomes a song. As our crickets sing the chorus, both our hearts will sing along. Oh, wow. Sorry.